Leslie was my first girlfriend. And my first girlfriend. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about that. that. Hi, I'm Josh from Atlanta, Georgia. Good mythical morning. Good morning. This episode is brought to you by iBackwards, the iPhone app where you can take video or audio, record it, and then instantaneously transform it into something reverse that you can upload to YouTube easily. Sixth grade comes in. That was when Leslie and Amber both moved into town. They no, moved, they weren't sisters. They no, were independent they people. They moved in from different places, and they were both good looking. They were both short. They yeah. were both under five feet. And at this point, I was already... Uh, in sixth grade, I was already well above six feet. You're taller than me now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As a sixth grader, I was. I remember specifically when I got to high school, I was six five. When I showed up as a freshman in high school, I was already six <laughs> five. Just to give you a reference of how big I am. What tall you are? I wouldn't call you big. I'm I'd, tall. Okay. I'd call you tall. So yeah, there was a buzz around middle school. Now, about how tall I was? No. <laughs> about uh, these two new, you know, the new girls this year. Because it was a such a small town. People right. didn't move in very small often. Town, small town, uh, small school. You, get, you go to Bowie's Creek Elementary School from kindergarten. We met there in first grade. Yep. And then you go all the way through eighth grade. Yep. We didn't have a separate middle school. Right. No so like school. word travels everywhere about, oh, the new, have you, have you heard about the new girls? Have you met them? You were in Miss Lanier's class oh, yeah. for sixth grade. And I was in Miss Campbell's class. I was in a separate class. Because I was smarter. But we, no, you, no, were, you just, were in the slow class. You, no, you, you were in the tall class. Tall guys, short girls all went into class. And the smart, awesome people were in okay. Miss Campbell's class. Not what I heard. Um, so, yeah, even though I was in a different class than uh, I, mean, I and missed Amber, you and that you, year. We, 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 we were we, still friends. We drifted apart, though. You made other friends. I made other friends. Well, yeah, what are you going to do? What but are now you gonna we're back do? together what again. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're not going to do it. You just cope with it. I'm glad we're back together, Lane. And I heard about Leslie and Amber being in the, those two new classes. I got the class, Miss Lanier's class. With Leslie and Amber in it, and I was obsessed by both of them. But the whole year went by, and I was just like, man, what do you do now that you like these? I like these girls, and what do I do? Well, Miss Lanier did a big thing for me. She arranged the seating in our class where you had four people sitting together facing each other. Which, that, is, which is weird. Well, I think she was on to something. At least I thought. I think she was on to something. It helps when you're trying to make the girl in your quadrant with you, so your girlfriend. It was, it was a quadrant, and then half. You know, they were. You were all facing different directions. You were. I don't know how she. You were all she facing the from. center of the quadrant. Yes. So, so somebody was facing the back of the classroom, which that part's weird. But let's just move beyond the fact that it was a weird seating arrangement. And move to the fact that it was advantageous. For me you. and Leslie were on two sides. We did a catty corner kind of thing. Okay. And so I had sat there looking at her all year long, thinking, "Whoa, she is so good looking. She's it's like short." It, it's but like, like if like you it. were here and she was here, like yeah. you were facing at ninety degrees. Right. Yeah. So that's kind and of, she was shorter, and you. I kind of just looked at her all the time. Ninety percent of the time. Ninety. I thought about her ninety percent of the time. Well, then. One day, the whole year had almost passed. There was one month left in school, and I said, "I got to do something." And I and I looked down. She had on shorts. I had on shorts. And I said, "You know what I can do? I can touch her knee with my knee." Never thought of this all year. What was I thinking? And I got a long leg. She had short legs. Yeah. But it didn't matter because mine are so long. Uh -huh. So I sit down in my seat a little bit, like I'm gonna. Uh, uh. Make contact with her leg, and she, she kind of moves it back, and then I kind of, I reach down a little bit further, <laughs> hit it again, and she, you, she moves it away. She and you guys are like your faces are this far from each other, yeah, yeah, so it's yeah, not yeah. like and are every, you looking at her? The second time she looks at me, and I'm like, I, I, I say nothing. I just look right in her eyes. What? I'm in sixth grade. I don't know what I'm doing. You looked right in her eyes? Yeah, like seductively. I didn't know. I didn't even know what that word meant. It looks like you're in a coma. That's not seductive. I was in sixth grade. I hadn't learned anything yet. So then, the third time, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm really, getting, <laughs> I'm having to reach because she's like moving away from me. And then I make contact one more yeah, time. Hold on, she's moving away. I mean, couldn't you take the hint? No, no it's a, she's just making it a challenge. Woo! And I, so I reach one last time and make contact, and she looks right at me and she says, "Brett, you got some long legs." And I was like, no response. I was just like, I didn't know what to say. 
But you just, I'm just going to look cool. I had set the hook. And let me tell you what happened when I started reeling it in. So I had established that I was interested. That was the end of that encounter? Yeah, that's all I needed to do. That established interest. You didn't say anything. I didn't know what to say. I just knew I had a knee. She had a knee. Let's put them together. You made contact. Yeah, I made physical contact. I don't recommend this method, but let me just tell you what happened. The knee touching courtship by Rhett. The next day, I go to Amber who I also liked, but was Leslie's best friend. And this is the way you do it in middle school. You have an intermediary. So I go okay. to Amber and I say, Amber, I like Leslie. In fact, I touched her knee. The, I didn't say anything about the knee. I said, I like Leslie. I'm interested in her. You know, I, in the sixth grade version of that, whatever that was. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, Tate likes her too. Oh, Tate Maddox. Tate I Maddox. will say his last name. Yeah. Tate Maddox. I think he went on to be a doctor or something, went to Wake Forest. T Tate had... He had had girlfriends since like fourth grade. He was a player. Tate was such a player. He wore those duck head shorts yeah. with like a golf shirt tucked into him. All the ladies loved that. They loved that. Yeah, I don't know why. Did, I was did. like, why? Did he ever play duck hunt in those duck head shorts? That would have been awesome. I never asked the question, right? <laughs> so anyway, so when I find out that Tate is also inter interested, I'm like, oh. The heat no, is on. There's no chance. Actually, that's not how, you know, I'm not like that. I was like, okay, Tate, what you got, Tate? So I began lobbying with Amber saying what how, how great of a guy I was. I'm tall, I'm almost 6'5 already, or whatever how tall I was. Really good at touching knees. Yeah, I can touch your knee like the champ. And Tate, he's been with everybody. You know, he, he's got all <laughs> kinds of girlfriends. Yeah, he's damaged goods. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I've never even had a girlfriend. So look at what you got to deal with here. And so somehow- I'm that, so tall, she's so short, later, it would be weird. Yeah, it'll be That's cute. Great. It'll be cute. Later that day, Amber comes back to me and she says, she said yes. She said yes. She wants to be my girlfriend. No, I think it was going with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, Cause I said, I wanna, I didn't say I'm interested. I said, I wanna go with Leslie. And she said, yes, you're going together. And that was it, boom. Then the next day we show up into our quadrant and I'm like, what do I do now? Now let, Touch let me- Touch her with both knees? <laughs> <a good> question. <laughs> let me pause you there because small school, I'm in the other class, word travels like wildfire. The moment that the words left Amber's lips and hit your ear that she was going with you, it spread throughout the whole school. I remember where I was when I heard the news. It's like, I remember where I was when Kennedy got shot. I, was, I remember where I was when I found out that Rhett was going with Leslie. I was in the library and I just sat down to read a book and I was sitting there with Maurice Cameron. Maurice Cameron leans, leans over, looks over his book and says, you hear about Leslie and Rhett? I was like, now we, we were still friends. I, I wanted friends. to let it leak out naturally, organically. And I was like, well, what, what, what? Maurice is like, they're going together. And I remember just a flood of uh, just, I guess, I don't know if angst is the right word because I don't even know what that word means, but just all of a sudden I felt like the boat has left the dock. <laughs> And I'm not on it. My life has changed my, my, forever. My best friend has a girlfriend. You what is, it, what it, does buddy. this mean? And I, I immediately knew what it meant. Okay. Now I had to get a girlfriend. And it had to be Leslie. <laughs> but he's my friend, so I have to wait. You have to wait in line. I have to wait for things to you know fizzle out, because inevitably they will. I mean, once you get past the height and the knee touching and the bravado, she's going to see right through that, and she's going to start looking over to Miss Campbell's class. To the, to the master of ceremonies. <laughs> That's me. Well, and we I will call myself that. And we will talk about the fact that, yes, indeed, you did succeed later mm -hmm. uh, in going out with Leslie, and we'll tell your story in a subsequent right. episode. But let me uh, let me finish, because my relationship was, was wild but short. Uh, like I said, I came back to school the next day. I had no idea what the ne what step two was. I knew step one was touching one knee. me. Step two was two knees. going saying I want to go with you. Step yeah. three was just showing up at school and like, what do you do now? So I did nothing. I just did, acted no differently. Did you even talk to her? Or did you just touch her knee and look at her in the corner? I talked to her a little bit more, but there was a dance coming up. End of the year dance. Oh, Benny Enzor was the DJ, remember mm -hmm. that? We would get out there and dance. Mm -hmm. Well, Shake I said, well, I know one thing up. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, slow dance with her. So I did slow dance with her, which is awkward. She's 4'11", I'm like 6'3", six, 6th six grader. You know? I can barely see her down there. Yeah. It's like I grabbing see the top, top of her shoulders. I can see the top of her bangs. You know, because yeah. she had bangs, of course, because what for the year it was. And anyway, so then we went and we sat down next to each other. And I, all I remember is this. This is how we sat. We sat up against the side of the cafeteria. It was in the cafeteria. I put my arm around her, and then 
She put her arm around me like this. Really? And then we clasped hands. Yeah, like like this. Why am Why am I doing this? Why am I being her? Because there's nobody else here except Jason, and you're sitting next to me. Listen. So we sat there like this. I'm sure she had this. All look on I her knew. Face too. All I knew is that I was supposed to kiss her. Uh uh-uh. uh But I couldn't do it. I was, I was so terrified. I just sat there the whole dance like this until my dad came and hit me on the head. Literally came and just hit me on the head. Like, <laughs> and told me to get up and leave. <laughs> That's great. And, I'm totally going to do that. And, I'm going to show up to my kids at the dance and be like, wham, get out of here. And so I go home. It's like doing a fly on then, your head. Let me finish this up so it doesn't go too long. But school ends, and then she's from Lillington. I'm from Bowie's Creek. So I just know that I'm not going to see her all summer because she goes to the Lillington pool and I go to the Keith Hills pool. Uh-huh. You know, you only see the people that go to the pool. So I'm like, what do I do now? I sat there in just stunned stupor, aloneness for solitude for a whole week until I get a call a week later, a week into summer. Think, sitting there thinking, what do I do? I got she this girlfriend. Ca- she called you. Amber called me. Of course she didn't call me. I never called her. She never called me. Amber mm, called me. The intermediary. She said, she said, Rhett? I said, yes. She said, uh, I'm calling for Leslie, and she would like to break up with you. It was, it was, it was, it was that sudden. Goodness, and you know she was right there beside her when she Amber well, called. Well, she was probably on the other line. She, yeah, know. she's probably uh, trying the other not phone. to breathe heavy. And I said, and and then and then she said, "Would you like to talk to her?" So oh, she man. had the, I and mean, she was gracious. And then I said, "Yes, I guess." So Leslie got on there and she said, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry." It was fun being your girlfriend. It's like Leslie's the sweetest girl, you know. She's still the sweetest girl to this day. We stay in touch. Yeah. Well, we're not really. We see her like every year or so when we go back home. Uh, and she, of course, she's married now, has children. I'm married now, has children. We don't really talk about our sixth grade fling. But I will say that she was she was gracious. And it was the beginning of me being fling. like, you know what? I'm going to learn from this because next time I'm going to do this right. And of course, next time it was Amber, which we can, we can talk about in another episode because oh, you also went out with Amber. Yeah, she was, she was, yeah. Small town. But she was my second girlfriend before she was your second girlfriend. Right. So I kind of caught up and took the lead. And all, then all I, this, yeah, and then it all talking about later. All right, let's spin the wheel. Woo! In this episode of Good Mythical Morning, we can be getting close. We've upped the odds of hitting a secret space. We're going to hit it. We're going to hit a secret spot. We're going to let's, let's not build it up too much. Who knows what's under there? What are the chances? Ooh, so close. Switch bodies. Okay, so we're not switching places, but we're. I think what this means is that now I, Link, am in Rhett's body. This is so weird. Yeah, I uh, feel weird too. I'm, wow, wow, I'm in your body. I feel taller and more confident. I feel, <laughs> I feel, I feel awesome for once. 